going on everybody justin here and in this video i just want to go over my february 2020 tbr i got nine ish books um that i would like to finish in the month of february um i'm participating in the valentine's or valentine's readathon um in february this was created uh actually first last year uh by kate from shepherd kate um i really enjoy her channel and she's bringing it back this year and it's just got a whole bunch of kind of things going on so i'll just link her video uh down below and i hope you go uh, check it out and either participate or at least go sub to her channel that sort of thing and there are also um, a few other uh, co-hosts um i think i'm going to do another video kind of more in depth on what i'm going to be doing for valentine's uh readathon uh during this month so um the books i'm just kind of kind of go over briefly uh why i picked them for like each challenge but just kind of not skim like just speed go through that otherwise my video is going to end up being 20 minutes long like it usually is and i don't really feel like doing that i say that like every video and it ends up being really long but here are the nine books that i have chosen and we'll start with the first four for the valentine's uh readathon uh the first one is commitment issues and it's to either finish a series or continue on a series um i got so many series uh that i almost forget i have there's actually some non-fiction series that I've also started um, that I have not finished, which is also bad. Uh, but I'm going with the second book in the Theodore Rex trilogy by Edmund Morris in this one. I just said called the Theodore Rex trilogy. Yes, I think I did. The Theodore Roosevelt trilogy. Um, the second book here is Theodore Rex, which deals um, entirely with uh, Theodore Roosevelt's tenure as um, uh, both terms of his presidency at the beginning of the 20th century. Uh, the Rise of Theodore Roosevelt that I have read and I thought was tremendous biography uh dealt with his uh birth up until that point and then the third book in the series is colonel roosevelt which deals from um after uh, he was president until his death uh this was just like i said the first book was just kind of a monumental uh autobi or not autobiographical just biographical work and there is a reason why um i can definitely see why it won the pulitzer prize uh that year for like biography or memoirs or whatever so yeah, I want to. I meant to read this last year at some point, and I just didn't get to it. So I'm going to do it this month in February. All right, the next challenge uh, that I chose, can't even remember. You see me, which is to read a book that you feel that. Um, oh, what did I write? <laughs> Represents you in some way. I'm doing terrible justice with uh, this uh, readathon. I got this book. Um, it is missing the dust jacket, but it is settled in the wild. I cannot remember what the author's first name is. Uh, Susan Shutterly. And the reason I feel like this book is going to re represent me is this book is kind of uh, about this um, woman's sort of just nature anecdotes from her observations and stuff. Uh, the subtitle is, I think, Rural Life. Uh, no, Notes from the Edge of Town. Uh, is she is writing from a, uh, a viewpoint of like a small town in Southern Maine uh, and kind of like, just like I said, with her like nature observations as like the days and the seasons kind of go by. And I think that's gonna be very representational of me just because I live in Northern Maine and I kind of like do the same thing. I don't like write about it or anything, but you know, I always take stock of, you know, kind of like what's going on with like, you know, the nature and environment, different animals coming and going and that sort of thing uh, around the property and whatnot. So, uh, just felt you know this pretty much me just like kind of more like uh on the down east coast side of things rather than kind of like the north main woods but you know i figured that one is pretty representational of me i think it's gonna be really fun to read next up we have shallow as a book you bought just for the cover and this one's gonna be interesting i've read it before so it's technically kind of a reread it's the fellowship of the ring by tolkien because you know that needs so much introduction so even though this cover is like really banged up i got this like i i actually didn't own um the actual physical books of lord of the rings i had some like when i was like younger and they got like destroyed or something like when i moved out uh but i just really enjoy these ones that i found at like a library sale um the matching covers and stuff or this kind of like design i thought were really cool and that's why i picked them up plus i thought you know i need some physical copies of them and you know i haven't read i think it's been probably six or seven years since i've last like read the fellowship of the ring or the lord of, any of the lord of the rings books so i think this year i might kind of do like a reread of like most of like tolkien stuff i think that'll be kind of neat and that's what i'm going with fellowship of the ring and one more challenge uh picture perfect is to read a comic or graphic novel or a picture book 
And I picked up my first like magazine style graphic novel the other day um, on my Portland trip with Tim. Fortunately, uh, there will not be a vlog from that. Uh, it's not from Life of Trying. We filmed like a couple little clips and then uh, we were really dumb. And when we got to the hotel, apparently we had valet parking and didn't realize it. And then we like, I left like all the camera GoPro stuff in the car and like all the stuff, like all the books we had bought. And we just had like our like regular stuff. And we, uh, we were like too like lazy to go like ask the valet back just to get like some of the stuff out of like the back seat um after we realized what's going on so yeah there won't be a vlog from that but you know there, i'm sure we'll think of something uh but anyways i'm going with caligula heart of rome um don't know anything about it except it was like a historical fiction like you know like time period kind of graphic novel i guess i saw um, I was at the mall and like, I can't remember if it was Newberry Comics or just another comic store. I was just kind of like looking at the graphic novels and I was like super overwhelmed. But then I saw like, it's like Roman. <laughs> I'm like, well, I'm picking that one up. Plus it was only, <laughs> yeah, as you can see, it was only $4. Um, so I think I'm going with this one. Don't, it looks very dark and like creepy and gory and stuff. I think, um, I guess pretty much they're taking Caligula and just ramping it up. Like a couple of notches if you guys know anything about Roman history uh you probably realize that will get pretty extreme really fast but anyways that is going to be the graphic novel i'm going to try out for valentine's all right so now we just go on to some of the uh other books i want to finish uh for some like good uh ancient history i am going to try and read uh the ancient celts uh, i believe this is the second edition now by barry cunliffe um i might be listening to these two on audiobook format to help get in some more uh reading and listening in over the course of the month and Barry Cunliffe, I have read um, The Extraordinary Voyage of Pythias uh, last year. Really, really enjoyed that one. And so I know he's going to be like a good uh, scholar and it's going to be quite, quite a lot of fun to read. Um, Celts are very interesting uh, uh, people to like study and everything. Though there are a lot of myths and misconceptions uh, surrounding uh, the ancient Celts, especially you know, like when we're talking about like Halstead and Latent culture, uh, for sure. Um, kind of the whole Celtic movement thing of like the modern era kind of... Mm, I don't want to say it, like misrepresents them, but in a lot of ways it kind of skews things um, that aren't necessarily historically accurate and stuff. But anyways, like I said, this is like the second edition. The first one was uh, pretty highly acclaimed. Uh, he's one of the world's bigger oh, Celtic scholars, I guess. Uh, so I'm definitely looking forward to that one. And then for the other audiobook I think I'm going to listen to is uh, Legion vs. Phalanx by Mike Cole. Uh, what's interesting about this book is uh, I, the only reason I saw this one was I saw Mike Cole had like some fantasy series, I think the Armored Saint or something, uh, and it was floating around Twitter a lot, and I just like happened to be like, you know, just like researching authors and books and whatnot one day, and then I saw like this like, n not this like nonfiction work by him, like that's like really interesting for like a fantasy author to actually like, you know, do something like that. Not exactly sure what the book's going to be about. About though, to be honest, because it is, even though it's called like Legion versus Phalanx, I, I'm assuming it's sort of like that hypothetical, you know, who would win, blah, blah, blah. But the obviously, actually, this is like one of the cases where they actually did, um, uh, like, fight each other, like, in real life. Like, for example, uh, battles like Heraclea, uh, kind of Cephalae, and Pinna, uh, the latter two especially. And um, pretty much, you know, in the second century uh, BCE, like, at, uh, Kind of Cephalae and Pinna, uh, the Phalanx totally just lost against like the uh, the Legion, so the Manipular Legion uh, under the Romans. So, not exactly sure what the book is exactly going to be about, unless it's just kind of explaining why the Legion was superior to the Phalanx um, at that point in time in history. Uh, but it was looked kind of like a fun read. Plus, I thought you know it's like ancient history. Plus, it's written by like a fantasy author. <laughs> so, who knows what I'm getting to with that one? But put it on my TBR. All right, next up we have some more books here. Now uh, for a fantasy book, I'm going with Wicked Saints uh, by Emily Duncan. The reason I'm going with this one is uh, another channel I like, uh, Katie from Asia Tomes recommended this book. Um, and I just really enjoyed the artwork on the cover. Plus it seems really dark, like kind of got like that Gothic thing going on. Plus it's heavily based on Eastern European folklore, I think, or Eastern European setting. Um, so I think it's definitely going to be cool to get that kind of, uh, flavor in fantasy, which I think it's definitely severely lacking, especially like kind of like that Slavic, um, kind of cultural influences and stuff. I have no idea what it's about, but, you know, 
it's fantasy, so that's what that's pretty much what I do with fantasy is someone recommends it to me and then I like go read it. <laughs> uh all right, we've got two books left. For a very short introduction, I'm gonna go with uh Magna Card. I'm trying to read one of these each month. Didn't quite finish the last one last month in January. So I did put it on the TBR because I only got like 10 pages or 20 pages left in Forest, but I will finish that this month. Um, but I'm also going to try and finish Magna Carta um, for a medieval history book. Uh, this one is by Nicholas Vincent. Um, I think you probably heard me say before, some of these are really hit or miss. Some are really good. I don't, I haven't read anything like medieval um, in the very short introduction series in a while. Actually ever. <laughs> I, I think I meant to say history stuff in a while and then medieval like pretty much never. I uh, never heard of Nicholas Vincent either, but you know, it's all going to be all about Magna Carta. And um, when they have like little niche topics kind of like this, like a one specific kind of um, event, uh, as in like Magna Carta, I think they take like really interesting spins to like look at it. And I think you come away, uh, I don't know, I just think it's a really unique way of approaching things because it's not like they are almost never just straight up like narrative histories of pretty much anything or just kind of like a chronological narrative. Like, they always take like this sort of uh, interesting way to make you think in a kind of roundabout way about everything. So that's why I'm going with Magna Carta. And then lastly, for a, a Warhammer book, instead of one of the uh, Horace Her the, uh, the, the, the what's the, I was going to say direct, instead of like one of the regular main series titles in the Horace Heresy, I'm going to go with one of the Primark series because I was able to pick this up in January, I believe. Um, this is part of the Primarchs kind of like sub-series and they're going to have on one of these like kind of short novels on each of the 18 Primarchs on Net Galley of Red, Angrons, and uh, Conrad Kurz's. Uh, this one is Paris Manus's The Gorgon of Medusa. This one is by David Geimer. Um, if you guys know anything about Warhammer and Horse Heresy, you know what happens to Ferris Manus in the Horse Heresy by Fulgrim. Not gonna, in case. There happens to be someone that's really interested in Horse Heresy or Warhammer and hasn't heard. I'm not going to say exactly what happened. Um, but yeah, it might be kind of interesting to see kind of his backstory before what occurs occurs. And maybe why he's kind of uh, gets to that point where he kind of, kind of does the confrontation or whatever. Uh, he's fun. But anyways, that's why I'm going with Ferris Mass. There, all right, those are the nine-ish books um, that I plan on reading in the month of February. Tell me in the comment down below what the book you're most looking forward to reading in February is. Always enjoy getting all these kind of recommendations and comments uh, down below. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, comment. Oh gosh, check out the Instagram and the Etsy and the Twitter and the website and all the things. Just uh, you know, check everything out and uh, whatever you end up reading in the month of February, always remember. Read victoriously.